of kindness will change the world. so proud and thankful for everyone for marching today to defend the sanctity of human life. There's not a more noble cause than being the voice for the voiceless. Being pro-life is recognizing that all women bring value to our lives and society. Thank you so much for taking the time to come and take a stand. You know, there's nothing more important than protecting the life of a child. I'm always amazed at how many young people live. For the dignity of life, for the recognition that all human life deserves the protection of our laws. As God bless you for what you're doing. I thank each and every one of you for your commitment to life and the joy that comes with it. Let's celebrate that. Let's help us make that contagious so that others will want to follow it. I'm encouraged by the thousands of you, including students and young people, who travel to Washington each year to stand up for what you believe in. I want to thank you for coming out today. The work that you do is so important and it's so appreciated. Thank you so much for coming to Washington, D.C and for supporting the pro-life movement. Like all of you here, I believe every life is a precious gift. And we all have a responsibility to protect it. One of the ways in which society is judged is how we take care of the very, very young. We are all created equal and in the eyes of God, especially the most vulnerable and innocent among us. Despite all the rewards we watched, were so gallantly streaming, and the rockets rattled, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag. Still there, oh, say, does that star spangled banner yet wave or the hand of the free? faith leaders, my fellow Americans, and especially to all the wonderful young people of this pro-life generation, I'm Vice President Mike Pence. And I'm Karen Pence. And, and we, we are pro-life. Pro -life. Yeah. And we want to thank you for making the journey to our nation's capital for the largest pro-life gathering in the United States of America, the 47th annual March for Life. Our family has made it a priority to attend the March for Life. And we wish we could be with you again today. But right now, 
We're here in Rome, at the Vatican, representing the United States of America. In fact, we just left a meeting with Pope Francis, and during our conversation, I thanked him for all that he and Catholic Americans have done to defend the sanctity of human life throughout the history of this movement. So to all the proud Catholics who I know are filling our National Mall today, proudly carrying banners representing your parishes all across this country. And to all the people of faith who are marching today, we want to thank you for your witness, thank you for your compassion, and thank you for standing for life. Your prayers have sustained this important movement for nearly 50 years, and we cannot be more proud. For 47 years, Americans of all backgrounds have traveled from across the country to stand for life. And today, as President of the United States, I am truly proud to stand with you. I want to welcome tens of thousands, this is a tremendous turnout, tens of thousands of high school and college students who took long bus rides to uphold the rights of our citizens. You embrace mothers with care and compassion. You are powered by prayer and motivated by pure, unselfish love. You're grateful, and we are so grateful, these are incredible people, to be joined by Secretary Alex Azar and Kellyanne Conway. And thanks also to Senators Mike Lee and James Lankford, who are here. Thank you, fellas. And Representatives Steve Scalise, families, and to protect the unborn. And during my first week in office, I reinstated and expanded the Mexico City policy and we issued a landmark pro-life rule to govern the use of Title X taxpayer funding. I notified Congress that I would veto any legislation that weakens pro-life policies or that encourages the destruction of human life. At the United Nations, I made clear that global bureaucrats have no business attacking the sovereignty of nations that protect innocent life. <laughs> Unborn children have never had a stronger defender in the White House. <laughs> and as the Bible tells us, each person is wonderfully made. We have taken decisive action to protect the religious liberty. So important, religious liberty has been under attack all over the world and frankly very strongly attacked in our nation. You see it better than anyone, but Americans who believe in the sanctity of life. They are coming after me because I am fighting for you and we are fighting for those who have no voice, and we will win because we know how to win. We all know how to win. We all know how to win. You've been winning for a long time. You've been winning for a long time. Together we are the voice for the voiceless. When it comes to abortion, Democrats, is a, and you know this, you've seen what's happened. Democrats have embraced the most radical and extreme positions taken and seen in this country for years and decades, and you could even say for centuries. Nearly every top Democrat in Congress now supports taxpayer-funded abortion all the way up until the moment of birth. Last year, lawmakers in New York cheered with delight upon the passage of legislation that would allow a baby to be ripped from the mother's womb right up until delivery. Then we had the case 
of the Democrat governor in the state of Virginia, the Commonwealth of Virginia. And we love the Commonwealth of Virginia, but what is going on in Virginia? What is going on? The governor is saying that he would execute a baby after birth. Do you remember that? Senate Democrats even block legislation that would give medical care to babies who survive attempted abortions. You stand for life each and every day. You provide housing, education, jobs, and medical care to the women that you serve. You find loving families for children in need of a forever home. You host baby showers for expecting moms. Yeah, you make, yeah. Yeah, we do. you just make it your life's mission to help spread God's grace. <laughs> and to all of the moms here today, we celebrate you and we declare that mothers are heroes. Your strength, devotion, and drive is what powers our nation. And because of you, our country has been blessed with amazing souls who have changed the course of human history. We cannot know what our citizens, yet unborn, will achieve. The dreams they will imagine, the masterpieces they will create, the discoveries they will make. But we know this, every life brings love into this world. Yeah. Every child brings joy to a family. Every person is worth protecting. And above all, we know that every human soul is divine and every human life, born and unborn, is made in the holy image of Almighty God. Join together and said this to our members of Congress and our state legislators, do you think they'd hear us? Do you think they'd hear us? I can't really hear you. Do you think they'd hear us? Well, we think so too. So we're gonna do it right now. So here's what I want you to do. Take out your phones. Everybody take out your phones right now. Open up your text message. My soul, my hips, my body, my fertility inner, outer beauty, and all that makes me she. We women are strong, intuitive, compassionate, and valuable. Smart, caring, nurturing, capable, and powerful. We are lawyers, mothers, poets, politicians, and teachers. Doctors, daughters, wives, artists, sisters, we are leaders. Let us always keep in our remembrance the bravery of our founding feminists. They birthed the 19th Amendment. Friends, these were our real-life heroines. Thank Alice Paul, because it was she, and fought with Susan B. Anthony. In 1920, they got the vote, but it was just the beginning. They called abortion, and I quote, the ultimate exploitation of women. They not only recognize the rights of our very smallest children, they knew abortion at its core also harms us as women. Now come 2020, the number of killed females unborn has reached 30 million. But it should be no surprise that abortion targets the marginalized, so I'm lucky I survived. Let's go back in time again and find another heroine, Jane Roe of Roe v. Wade, the Supreme Court case that made abortion legal in all states. Jane Roe was a cover name. Roe's real name was Norma McCorvey. She said she firmly believes the entire abortion industry is based on a lie. She spent the rest of her life trying to undo the law that bears her name. This was Jane Roe of Roe v. Wade, the woman who fought for abortion in the first place. By the time she realized the lie, they closed the case. We will never have true equality until we realize that abortion... We're not just number one in football, but we were just rated the number one most pro-life state. And why? It's because we're not afraid to stand up for life. Margin for life is not a revolutionary idea. In fact, when you think about those three inalienable rights, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, it's no coincidence that they put the first among those to be the right for life. But a few years ago, President Trump alluded to this. We started hearing stories out of New York 
the governor of Virginia, talking about how they and their states want to now make it legal to kill a baby after it is born alive outside of the womb. They think, they think they can call that abortion. We know what it is. It's murder. To kill a baby born alive outside the womb, yet, in many states right now, it's not illegal. And that is why we are fighting to pass the Born Alive Act. Track record has been, along with this Senate. But now is the time to go for the win. It's time to roll back Roe versus Wade and put the will of the people into the law. And that means protecting the unborn in the law. Now we know that victory is possible, but we also that nothing is inevitable. So no one can afford to sit on the sidelines during this coming election. People are asking, why is it that the pro-abortion women's march is shrinking as the power and the optimism and the youth of the March for Life grows? I think we know why. You are the reason, you are the reason that this movement has grown. Lasting power comes from the truth reflected. ready to jump in line. We are actually right at the front of the start of the um, pro-life march. We just came from listening to President Trump's um, talk, which was absolutely beautiful. His address was amazing. Um, so we are here to say yes to life, to all life from conception to natural death, to save the fathers, save the grandparents, save the mamas and save those sweet babies. So, all in Christ, for for life. life. And we are setting up our big Life Runners banner. Gearing up, ready to represent. All in Christ, here we go. Generation! Our generation! Our generation! 
Let's march! 
Archdiocese walked by, so we did meet up with them. Um, actually, I think they're still walking by, but we've already made it halfway back down the um, march, and we're seeing everybody, and it just keeps getting better and better. There's more people here than there's ever been, and it's just, it's hope. All these people is hope.
the 3rd Infantry Regiment, United States Army, Guard of Honor, two of the unknown soldiers. The ceremony that you are about to witness is the changing of the guard. In keeping with the dignity of this ceremony, it is requested that everyone remain silent and standing. Thank you.
Again. Hello again. Where are we, Steve? We are in Arlington National Cemetery. We are. Where did we just come from? We just came from uh, seeing the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, and the Declaration of Independence. And now we are here to honor the men and women who um, have bravely, bravely fought and died for our country. Yeah, gave us our rights um, and who created this country. Who? Yeah. We're the ones that uh, got us the freedom to write the Declaration of Independence and, and continue to fight for our freedoms. Continue to fight for our freedoms. So, God bless America and God bless these men and God bless. We are off to see the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier for all those who have gone missing in combat and are not known to any of us. <laughs> God bless. See, what are we doing today? We are going to see Lincoln on a stage. We are going to see Lincoln on his yes. Abe. Another beautiful day in DC. Yeah. There is the Capitol building and the Washington Monument. And here is the Pool of Dreams. And look who came with us today. Jesus, because Jesus went to Washington.
Good, Good evening. evening. Hello. We have a guest with us tonight. Hello, I'm Mary. I work with the Respect Life Office for the Archdiocese of St. Louis and a good friend of Deanna and Steve. Yay! So where are we going to? We're in the plane, obviously. We are going back to St. Louis. We are heading home. Trip is finished. Sad, sad (laughs) trip is finished. Yeah, it's over. But it was absolutely amazing. There was lots of God moments. What was your favorite moment, Mary? Absolutely. It was probably meeting uh, the different pro-life heroes. I met David B. Wright. I met uh, Bethany and Ryan Bomberger. I met um, all the kids who came, uh, saw Abby Johnson at a reception, and it was fantastic. Yeah. That, that was just amazing. And then all the kids. All the yeah. kids are my heroes, too. Yeah. All my pro-life heroes. My favorite was just seeing all the people in the massive crowd. It was my first time at the march, and it was insane. Yeah. This insanely was insanely wonderful, though. Yeah. This was my second time, evening, and it was and pretty and incredible. So, we are on our way to St. Louis. Yes. 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 Happy travels. Nice to, thanks for letting me be on your video log. Absolutely. We'll see you home at home. Bye.